So it's really important, brothers and sisters, that you know you, we use, we, we are always aware of our surroundings and we try to see is, is you know, can I use this opportunity um, to tell people about Allah, right? Because, you know, every chance that we get can be a chance of that. They want to know about Islam, we'll give them that one. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to Daba Diaries, episode number eight. Alhamdulillah. Today's topic is, again, I would say a serious topic, as you can see from the title, but it's still and a very, very important topic. So about a month ago, about a month ago, one of a close family friend, um, an uncle, um, he passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon all of those people who have passed away and uh, allow us to take heed from that. So I uh, attended the janazah, I went to the burial place and uh, the son is uh, quite a young son, he's in his early 20s. So Alhamdulillah, you know, my, myself and my family have been close with the family. So I was with him pretty much all the way and, uh, and uh, when, when it came to the janazah, um, in terms of the burial time, I saw that Alhamdulillah, um, a lot of his friends were there, right? So they were again in the early 20s, you know, whatnot. So the, the Shabbat, the youth, right? They were there and uh, it was, that, that was number one, it was very good to see, right? That was really good to see that, you know, um, at, at a tough, tough time, um, that his friend, the Muslims come together, no matter what they do, even when they're young, right? So they were there and uh, you know, they were, of course, they were helping um, regards regards to the burial, um, putting the soil, and uh, you know, as they were putting the soil, and of course, I was standing there as well. I did my bit as much as I could as well. Um, I had this feeling in my head, and I thought, you know what? I need to say something here, and uh, I'm not sure if you've seen. You know, there's been quite a number of videos, and may Allah bless these people, where the the the, the scholars, the teachers, the the, the mashayikh, um they use this opportunity of a janazah, of a burial, to remind people around that this is our destiny, that this is our destination, right? This is our destination. And, uh, you know, the, the, the Prophet wasallam he, he told us, remember death often, right? Even in the Quran, Allah tells us, remember the destroyer of, the, the, the destroyer of pleasures, death, right? Because it reminds us of that where are we going what have we done and where are we going, right? So back to this burial, um, Alhamdulillah, the Imam was there and, uh, you know, mashallah, tabarakallah, he gave his bayan in, uh, in Urdu. And, uh, and of course, you know, when, when people of knowledge speak, um, those who are concerned, um, they pay heed to it, right? And uh, so he made dua for the, the, for the, for the, for the mayyad, for the, for the one who's deceased. And uh, of course, he gave some other, you know, short reminders for the people as well. So after the burial was pretty much done and I saw the youth were still there and I thought to myself, you know, Ya Allah, I want to do something as well. And uh, before I tell you what I did, I want to also, t you know, go on a tangent here again. Whereas that it's, it's really important, brothers and sisters, that, you know, da'wah isn't something which, like I said, it can be done. At different times at different places for different reasons for different people um, so we need to be very um, smart I guess to to use the opportunity that Allah presents to you for the purpose of that for the purpose of that for the purpose of because again what is that one right calling people back to Allah calling people to the message of the Prophet Sallallahu right this is what we say I mean that means invitation but when we talk about that we're talking about that to Allah Dawa to the Prophet Sallallahu right? So it's really important, brothers and sisters, that you know you be used. We, we are always aware of our surroundings and we try to see is is you know, can I use this opportunity um, to tell people about Allah, right? Because you know, every chance that we get can be a chance of dawah. You know, uh, that's that's one of the things from this episode. The second thing I wanted to say also was that regarding the youth, right? I'll tell you again what I did with this 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 group of youth, alhamdulillah. Um, and I've mentioned this in the previous episode as well, whereby, you know, a student interviewed me and, uh, you know, I told you the, 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 the importance of staying connected with the youth, right? So 
you know the youth are you know are people that i would say again you know that can make or break not just a country or a nation we can make or break the ummah itself as well right you know we want our youth to be people who of course that they are striving to be the best in this world but also the deen right and and i mentioned this before as well you know um we need to be careful who our youth are friends with right because again the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you are on the religion of your friend you are on the religion of your friend right um so the youth sometimes they don't really they aren't really moved by just a bayan you know like just like like a khutbah sometimes it depends what kind of khutbah it is as well but sometimes you know they look, when they look at the molvi or an imam they, they you know sometimes they don't feel connected to them right they think oh this is really a pious person i'm a sinner or i'm i'm i'm, I'm not knowledgeable enough so i can't really connect to them sometimes it doesn't it's not always a kid but sometimes that happens right so back to the burial again um i saw the youth and uh, i started making dua to allah by myself that you know ya allah i want to say something here i want to tell the youth about you know the importance of uh, taking something out of this because alhamdulillah i started alhamdulillah i started i said bismillah and i started telling the youth um you know to to remind them that you know we shouldn't be people who come for a burial who come to a janaza who see the dead who support the family one two three days and that's it then we go away we go back to our normal routine and we don't take any lessons from that we don't remind ourselves that one day i'm going to go be i'm going i'll be going 6 feet under as well right or whatever feet under right um and again i i told them that look you know just because you're in your 20s today it doesn't mean that you're going to be you know allah my allah is going to give you until your 50s and your 60s to ask for repent and repentance and change yourself you know again i i the surrounding i looked at the surrounding and i said and this is something important in dawa as well you should connect to the location you're in so that you know people who are listening to your message they can relate to your message as well um sometimes it's good to be generic but sometimes you need to be specific so i told them look look at it look at it look at around you brother look look around you brothers i look around you you got people who are in the 50s are in the grave you are people who are 5 years old who were who who are in the grave 20s 30s whatever age you want to talk about you will find them in the graveyard you will find them in the graveyard right and um then i moved on to the i guess the most important thing um regarding our deen after shahada salah right so alhamdulillah you know i i i i thank allah that i was able to do that because you know i wanted to use that opportunity to remind our ummah to remind our shabab that while we spend our time in having fun which is no problem you know there's a time for fun as well the entertainment is halal in islam um as long as we use the right means for it but you know we should never forget the salah right um so i reminded them about the salah that you know don't think that you will grow old and then you'll start praying salah right um and i can't remember again everything i said but the reason i wanted to make this episode i guess was that it's it's very important brothers and sisters where we try to find whatever opportunity to connect with the youth um and keep knocking on their doors because um we should always think good of our youth as well you know sometimes we 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 start to belittle our youth we start thinking oh they're not going to understand or they're immature or you know or they just want to have fun or they you know they rebel they they just rebellious they 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 you know all of these negative connotations come to our head and of course sometimes they are correct but that's not something the youth want to hear right because when you tell them that as parents we might do that as well when you start looking down on your youth because they're not following the deen of islam because they're being disobedient because of whatever bad reason then it's difficult for them to you know they'll they'll start thinking you know what this is what i am i'll stay like this right um and this is where we need to have a balance between showing them the mercy but also showing them the you know the, the wrath as well the you know if you don't fix yourself guys this is this is what what might be awaiting you right um, so whatever the possibility you get um and sometimes what happens also as well is that you know it depends who is speaking to the youth as well and that's why sometimes sometimes parents may use a secondary speaker a secondary option to pass the message to their youth because they think if they pass to the message to the youth the youth might think oh 
here we go again, right? The youth might think like that, right? Um, and it's not just the youth, even adults might think like that, right? When you're trying to advise your spouse, when you're trying to advise your, you know, your, your, your brother or your sister, um, you know, you, you, might, you, start, you might start having this mindset whereby, you know, they don't know, this is my life, I wanna live it the way I want to, right? Um, so sometimes when a neutral person, when a person that you don't really know, when a person doesn't know you as well, right? So they can't judge you. And, you know, they give you that message, it sometimes hits you more. It sometimes hits you more. Um, and that's the point of doing that one, right? You want to, you're spreading a message to Islam to people, or you're calling people back to Islam um, without wearing the glasses off. You know what? I know this person and I know he's not going to do it. And that's why sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it's more difficult to do da'wah to people that you know compared to the people you don't know. Do you understand what I'm trying to say, right? Sometimes the people you don't know, it's easier to do da'wah to them, right? Because number one, you don't know them. So, you, you know, you're not trying to be judgmental, hopefully not by the appearance. And number two, you think, you know what? They might not think of you, oh, here we go again, that type of mentality, right? So sometimes easier like that. But still, of course, Allah tells us in the Quran that save yourself and your families, save yourself and your families from the place which is made of stones and people, the hellfire, right? So Allah is very serious about this, of course, that our first duty is upon ourselves, of course, and our family. Um, so we shouldn't think, you know what? I won't give da'wah to my youth. I won't give da'wah to my family because uh, they're not going to listen to me. I'll let other people do it. That's not the point of this episode. The, episode, the point is that when the youth um, are in need of guidance, you keep doing what you're doing. And hopefully people like us, when they see the youth at different opportunities, we keep doing what we're doing as well. Right? This is what I'm trying to say. Right? That the youth are, um, they're, they're always in need of guidance because we're living in a time where, you know, they're getting bombarded. They're absolutely getting bombarded with so many, you know, thoughts and theologies and fitna and fahisha and, you know, um, immorality and unethical issues. And there's just so much going on right now. And it's not going to stop. You know, if you think that this is going to get better, it's not because this is going towards the Kiyama. But it doesn't mean we just give up and say, you know what, it's too much. Let, let, we still keep striving. We still keep using the platform to tell people about Islam. So again, I hope that, you know, when you find the opportunity, like the burial, like a, like a family gathering, um, you know, don't be too excessive as well, I guess. You know, don't use every opportunity to, tell, to, to look down on people. Because that, and that, that's something really important as well. Sometimes when you hear khutbas, you know, the imam or anyone can be quite generic. That saying, you know, the ummah is a complete mess. You know, um, we are all going to, you know, we are all displeasing Allah. And then, you know, people who are trying their best and they're like, what's the point? You know, I'm never going to be appreciated because people are always looking down on me, right? So we need to be very careful, brothers and sisters, the words that we choose as well. So, and this is why Allah says in the Quran as well and, and the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well, that like, please have hikmah, you know, guide people to Islam with good speech and wisdom. And um, so wisdom comes with, you know, the location, the time, the situation and good speech, of course, using the best words. Don't be generic. Don't stereotype. Just because, so, just because you see one youth doing something, it doesn't mean every youth is involved in that, right? Just because his friend is doing it, don't automatically think his, the, all of his friends are doing it, even though it can be you know, easy, as I said, but don't assume, right? And this is the you know, perspective of a Muslim that we always are positive and we always think good of people, unless they show us otherwise, unless they show us otherwise, right? I hope this episode again was beneficial, my brothers and sisters. Um, and uh, if, if any youth is listening to this, and I hope there is, I ask Allah that I, you, I, you know, some of the youth are able to listen to this message. Um, and I'll say again, just a quick one, what I said to those uh, brothers at, at the burial as well, that remember brothers and sisters, um, age is just a number, right? Death can come anytime. And uh, you know, um, under the shade of Allah, under the shade of Allah, and I think I mentioned this before as well, 
there are seven groups of people that will be given the shade of Allah. And one of those group of people is who? A youth. A youth who kept himself to the obedience of Allah. Right? Who tried their best to stay connected to Allah. Right? So this age of being a youth, it's it's a make or break sometimes. It's a make or break sometimes, right? Um, don't let shaitan make you think you've got loads of time ahead of you. Just have fun now. Prepare for your akhirah later. Right? It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Right? And I'm sure you've heard of many people who have died young. Even maybe in your friend circle. For whatever reason. For whatever reason. Right? So, um, just keep checking yourself. You know, that your salah, how's your salah? How's your relationship with the Quran? How's your friend circle? How's your, um, your, your relationship with your parents? How's your relationship with your, with your income as well? Your studies as well? There are many things that we can talk about, right? Um, but please, please, please do not let this age of youth go by. Because we will be asked about how we spent our youth. When we had the energy, when we had the time, hopefully, when we had the, you know, the zeal, the passion, whatever you want to call it, right? Uh, and whether we like it or not, at the way, the more you grow older, it's not going to be the same, right? So the ibadah, the worship you can do in your 20s, most likely, most likely, you can't do that in your 30s or your 40s or your 50s, right? So please, um, I hope, you know, by this message, you know, if you're not praying salah, start praying it. Just start by one if you can. If you're not reading the Quran, start reading it. Just even one ayah. Just one ayah. Right? But read it with translation, brothers and sisters. Right? If you know Arabic, Alhamdulillah. But if you don't, which most of us, we don't. That's not for Allah. And this, of course, is, it's, it's, it's something that we need to fix. But read one ayah. Every day. Let Allah talk to you. Right? If, you do, if you're someone who doesn't give charity, give charity. Daily. One dollar, two dollar, ten dollar, whatever that might be, if you can, right? Um, if you have not said I love you to your parents for a long, long, long time, do that. Do that, right? And, and the list can go on and on and on. But these are the three things I would say. Um, so I hope and I and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as adults, as elders of the community, we should always, always, always make dua to Allah that He guides our youth. That He guides our youth on the straight path that leads straight to Jannah, right? Because we are concerned about our youth. It's like we're concerned about ourselves, but we should always be concerned about our youth. We should be concerned about our offsprings. Those we don't, those we don't, we're not gonna see. But this is the head of the Muslim. We're always concerned about the Muslims that are gone. We've never seen that. The Muslims are on the graves. We've never seen that. The Muslims are around us. We've never seen that, some of them, right? And the Muslims are going to come. We've never seen that. But we make dua for them. And this is from the Sunnah of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba that we make dua for the whole Ummah. So make dua for the youth, my brothers and sisters. Um, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, out of His mercy, He guides our youth on the straight path. Protect them, protect them, protect them from all of the fahisha that's going on. And above all, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala protect the Iman of our youth in an age where people are leaving Islam like nothing. Jazakallah khair for watching. I hope again this episode was a beneficial. Barakallah fee. Please share if you find it beneficial. And I'll see you again in the next episode. Jazakallah khair. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.